Every year, for about a two to three week time period, from the end of January till President's Day in February, Tucson, Arizona becomes the center of the universe of rocks, minerals, and crystals. The official name of this rock extravaganza is a Tucson Gem Mineral and Fossil Showcase. This is not one mineral show, it's 51 separate shows going on during this two week period. In 1955, Tucson Gem and Mineral Society held a small showing, a small exhibit in the local school auditorium. And as collectors always do, before the show and after the show, individual people would trade minerals or buy from each other. And over the years, individuals would open small showings and sell their own minerals. This eventually grew to this year, 2020, over 65,000 people will descend upon Tucson for the 51 shows and 4,000 separate exhibitors. So this year, on January 20th, different shows start opening. Some overlap, some run the whole length of time, but you'll have a total of 51 shows that all culminate on February 13th when the main show opens. And that show is the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show held in the Convention Center. And it's the great, great, great grandkid of that original show held in the school auditorium. That Tucson Gem and Mineral Show combined with all the 51 satellite shows all make the Tucson Gem Mineral and Fossil Showcase. These 51 satellite shows are held in various kinds of venues to include the Tucson Expo Center, the Kino Sports Complex, in hotels with the vendors in individual rooms, and in hotel courtyards and parking lots with the vendors in little tents. And some shows are in these giant tents. Here's Lisa from Featherworks Jewelry pointing out exactly how large this gem mall tent is. This is the side view of that gem mall tent and you can see the vans in the distance for size comparison. I'll take you through a quick rundown of four very popular satellite shows here at Tucson. And at the end of the video, I'll give you some tips on how to navigate the shows and get the most out of them. It might be useful, especially for a first time visitor to the Tucson Gem Mineral and Fossil Showcase. This is my 12th year going to Tucson and hopefully I can give you some insights and tips and encourage you to attend the next show. The first is Pueblo Gem and Mineral Show, which is held in the Ramada Inn, which sits on the frontage road to I-10. There are several hotels that sit along this frontage road to I-10 to include Motel 6, Quality Inn, and Travel Inn, which all have shows in them. I wanted to include this car in this video so you could see how large this crystal is. The Pueblo is probably the most popular of all the frontage road shows. This is the front of the hotel where generally every year they have large quartz specimens out for display. And everywhere around all the shows, you'll see forklifts, large barrels full of rough and large crates that they use to transport around these huge crystals and mineral specimens. It looked like this year, more so than the other years, that many of these large specimens were mounted on these huge metal columns. Here at the front entrance of the Ramadi Inn are some more crystal specimens along with a lot of other tents in the parking lot housing other vendors. These little tents are connected to the courtyard door of each individual hotel room. 
each vendor rents out a room and then has their wares displayed in the room along with the increased space made by the little tents that are connected to their courtyard door. Here is a view for this vendor's tent into his hotel room. And here is the view from this vendor's hotel room out into his main door that goes out into the corridor where you can enter other people's rooms to see what they have. It was a little disconcerting the first year I went to Tucson walking around into people's hotel rooms, but after a while you get used to it and many shows are held in hotel rooms where they do have the vendors in individual rooms. Here is rough being sold from someone's tent outside their room. There are also tents inside the courtyard itself. Here's a vendor selling cheroite out of one of the tents. And as you can see, it almost has a carnival-like atmosphere here in the courtyard. The Pueblo is a kind of one-size-fits-all. It's a public show that does not require a wholesale license and they sell everything from mineral specimens to beads to finished jewelry to loose gemstones and all kinds of crystals. And so you're going to get a variety of vendors and shoppers at the Pueblo. Everything from people who want to make pearl jewelry or do beading or someone who's collecting mineral specimens and fossils, or someone who's looking for a nicely cut stone to set in some jewelry. Here at the front side of the Ramada Inn is a company from France that makes tables and furniture from petrified wood. Here in the parking lot is Uruguay Minerals. They're famous for their grape jelly amethyst and as you can see, there's an enormous selection of amethyst geodes. Here's the inside of a particularly large amethyst geode with calcite. Uruguayan amethyst is different than Brazil amethyst in that it's darker and has a deeper purple color. Mineralia in their tent sold onyx lights and bowls. Decor at the front of the Ramada Inn sold all kinds of cut crystal and natural crystal points. They had some really beautiful crystal specimens and they were highlighted by the very good lighting that they had. Most of these may not fit your budget, but they sure are fun to look at. Every year when I go to the Pueblo, I go to the south side of the Ramadi Inn parking lot to bookbinders. When you see all those cool pictures on Instagrams of giant crystals and crystal bathtubs and stuff like that, it's almost always shot at bookbinders. Here is a kind of giant amethyst agate tub. It's kind of hard to get a fix on how large this tub is from this video. But Bookbinders is very popular and someone will sit in it eventually. It always makes for a cool insta pick. They also had this agate crystal bench. It was actually pretty cool to sit in, more than one way because it was actually physically cold. I would imagine this would be pretty cool in somebody's garden. They also had an assortment of these quartz pillars and a lot of quartz chairs like this. Here's a kind of agate chair. I know it's intuitively obvious, but these are just giant pieces of crystal and rocks and minerals. You forget about it because you're outside and everything else is just huge. Inside the giant tent that houses bookbinders is also style art stone craft. And they have these beautiful like branches with carved quartz birds on them. 
And here's an amethyst geode with rose quartz birds. I neither want one or can afford one, but they're really cool to look at. And then further on in that tent are many vendors that sell all kinds of crystal specimens and carved crystals and beads. Another place that I visit every year at the Pueblo is Quartzium. Here's the front part where they've got their larger pieces on display outside. Inside, they've got an amazing array of spheres, pyramids, and obelisks. It's probably some of the most highest quality crystal and quartz you can find without going into a private showing. Right next door, Quartzium has a small room where they show their highest quality quartz and quartz carvings. The proprietor very generously let me film he says he has most of his accidents in there when people are filming. I think their smallest carving runs about three to five thousand dollars and then it goes up to tens of thousands of dollars. Now you can see why I make it a point to visit Quartzium every year. Another place that I visit every year at the Pueblo is John Dyer's booth. As you can see from his sign, he's won many awards. He helped popularize some of the more cutting edge faceting like concave facets and fantasy cuts where they use a laser to go up inside of a gemstone and facet it from the inside. His gemstones are truly amazing. These stones are fantasy cuts. Fantasy cuts sometimes require a little bit larger work surface. So not only did they break the mold of traditional gemstone cuts, they also helped popularize other kinds of minerals into gemstones like rose quartz and topaz because you can obtain them in larger pieces. Here are some amethyst and beryl. And here are some citrine, ametrine, and amethyst. Next up is the Kino Gem and Mineral Show at the Kino Sports Complex. The Kino Show always has huge pieces, so you'll always see forklifts and huge crates all over the place. The Rockstar Gallery has slabs of minerals that they turn into beautiful waterfalls. They were especially refreshing to see in the arid Tucson climate. They also made beautiful furniture out of huge slabs of minerals. Mosa sold all kinds of fossils. These are trilobites. I don't know what this is, but it looks pretty lethal. I don't know who the Queen of Rock is, but they had some pretty cool stuff at this booth. Here is a series of concentrically sliced geodes. It was a very popular picture for people to take for their Instagram. They had large amethyst geode splits. And something I had not seen here before. You could pay $10 to their charity and then sit in that chair and they would close you up inside of this amethyst geode. Of course I tried it. The guy filmed me as he was closing the geode. It was pretty cool. And Diamond Pacific Tools had their usual booth with every kind of tool you would need to cut minerals, rocks, or quartz. 
vendor enter the earth had their usual rose quartz walkway. They cover the path from their front gate to the front door of their tent with tumbled rose quartz. They have a little sign that tells you that you can pick up one for yourself. I thought it would be popular with children, and it was, but it was really cute because whole families would stand around and mull over which piece of rose quartz they wanted to take home. It was a really great idea. And of course, they had their big pieces like this giant rose quartz bowl. These large slabs of fossilized nautilus and huge hunks of rose quartz all over the place. They had a nice selection of petrified wood slabs and lovely tables made from labradorite and agate slices. In the main tent at Kino, Crystal Allies had a wonderful selection of fluorite from China. And their proprietor and staff were very knowledgeable and did a really great job packing my specimens for shipping. Also in the Kino Show's main tent, they had a variety of beads, finished jewelry, crystals, specimens, and crafts. Next up, we're going to the Casino del Sol, where they are holding the Colors of the Stone show and Two Bead True Blue, both of them which are mainly beading shows. These shows are truly a beader's delight. Here are beads even before you enter the show. They have piles and piles of gemstone beads. seed beads, and beads of every shape, size, and color. They also had some finished jewelry, and you could take jewelry making and beading classes. Here there are turquoise cabochons for sale by the Silver Day Trading Company. I'll talk about them a little more in depth in a bit. And the last show we're going to talk about is the 22nd Street Show, which is held in four huge tents with a giant dusty gravelly parking lot. The 22nd Street Show sells a variety of things. Booths with loose gemstones. Meteorites. Crystal singing bowls. Pens made out of minerals. Sinks made out of different kinds of minerals for your home redecorating projects. Knives with the handles made out of minerals. But what the 22nd Street Show is most famous for is their giant dinosaur skeletons. These dinosaur skeletons actually get sold every year. They're fun to look at and they can also be rented out for like parties and stuff. And of course, the 22nd Street Show also has a beautiful array of crystals and all kinds of fossils for sale. There's also stores that sell finished jewelry. in stores that sell huge slabs of petrified wood. And vendors that sell artwork and crafts. 
but at the 22nd Street show, the dinosaurs are king. Now, while showing you some clips of the Tucson Gem and Mineral Showcase, I'd like to give you a couple of tips. First off, do your planning. You can go to Expo Press and download a catalog of next year's show. I'll leave the details in the description box. If you're shopping for larger specimens or crystals or furniture, I would try to drive if I could because shipping can be cost prohibitive and you won't have to pay for a rental car. Make your reservations early. This is February of 2020 and I already have my reservations for my hotel room for 2021. The hotels near the city center and all the shows will book up fast. This year, several friends and I rented an Airbnb. Though it was a good way to save money, there weren't a whole lot close into town, so we had a lot of driving to do. And we had a little bit of a problem with the people that were renting the house to us. They had insinuated they could just kick us out knowing that we had no place else to go. Just be aware that Airbnb or VRBO or something like that really isn't guaranteed reservations. When you decide on what days you want to go, part of your decision process should be whether or not you want to see the final show, the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show at the President's Day weekend. Everyone should probably see that show at least once because they will have specimens that are better than museum quality. Museums can't afford some of the really beautiful specimens they have up for sale and display. But all the vendors that are there for the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show at the Convention Center are retailers. So you will be paying retail price even though there's some very lovely things there. Right now the cost I think to get into that show is around $12 or $13. All the other satellite shows are free because they're mainly there to sell you something. So once you've decided if you want to mainly see the satellite shows or see the convention show, then you need to decide one of two things. Are you going for the most unique special item or are you looking for really good prices? If you want the best, most unique pieces, you need to go at the beginning of a show so that you have the most selection. But if you want the best prices, then you want to go toward the end of the show because the dealers won't want to pack up their stuff and take it back home. I've actually asked for the price of a piece of jewelry and the salesperson quoted me a price. Then the owner went over and chastised the salesperson and said, hey, this is the last day of the show. And then turned around and immediately gave me a 30% discount. Don't be afraid to negotiate. I'm the kind of person that just picks up something and pays the sticker price. But at my first show, I was looking at a large piece of citrine and thinking about something else. I was supposed to meet up with someone. I kind of dithered, set it down and walked away and the guy came right back and gave me a 30% discount. I bought it and still treasure it today. I found that the easiest way to negotiate is if I'm going to buy more than one product, I'll just say, how much can you give me if I buy these two or these three? Many of the vendors will do what's called Keystone. Keystone is kind of like a wholesale price. It just basically means that the listed price just take 50% off and that's what they're asking for. Many of the shows are mixed wholesale and retail. You'll get one price that's on the sticker or get a wholesale cheaper price if you have a tax license. And many of the wholesale vendors will require you to spend a certain minimum amount. If you do have a wholesale license, it's best to go online early and do registration there and then print out your badges. This will save you from waiting in very long lines. And if you go to AGTA, you should pick up your badges the day before. That'll save you some time there too. If you'll be staying in Tucson for a longer period of time, you might want to check out the Gem Ride. There are several loops that go to different shows. I tried it one year, but it ended up taking up too much time waiting for the different shuttles for me because I'm only at Tucson for about four days. 
where I could see it being very handy is if say you're staying with some friends and they can only drop you off in the morning when they go to work and then pick you up in the evening when they're coming back you could use the gem ride to get around between the different shows and if you're staying a long time you don't mind waiting around for the shuttle one of the things I did find out when I did use the shuttle was it was really cool meeting different people and talking to them about what they had gotten if you do plan on taking the shuttle, you may want to pick up the official guide or the gem ride guide. Both of them have maps and explanations. Also go to gemride.com. You can find these two guides at the airport and along with the Tucson Easy Guide and the Tucson Show Guide, they'll all be at all the different shows. All these brochures are really handy. The easy one is nice to carry around because it's small, but the two show, Tucson show guide is a lot bigger, but a lot more thorough. There's also the Meta Tucson guide and the Fossil Dealers guide. All these are available at the different shows. If you are driving, do not park illegally. You will get a ticket or get towed. There are police all over the place, especially for security for the gym show, but they're watching the parking spaces like hawks. As far as what to bring, make sure you bring your tax license if you have one, plenty of business cards, and copies of both. In many places, to pick up your badge, you'll need a photo ID, so either your driver's license or a passport will work. Bring a way of cataloging your fines. It's easy to get overwhelmed and forget where you bought something. A popular way is to bring baggies and a sharpie and put your items in the baggies and then mark them with a sharpie and put the card of the vendor inside the baggie. Bring cash as many times the ATMs don't work. But lately more and more people are using Square and you can use your credit card. But still you, some vendors will only take cash bring and wear comfortable shoes even if you go to the fancy um, wholesale shows like agta and you wear a suit still bring comfortable shoes you'll be standing and walking a lot bring and wear layers usually every morning i'm freezing and then by noon or one o'clock i've got my jackets and my sweaters tied around my waist i carry a backpack for my camera equipment and then I just hand carry anything I buy. But you'll often see these beating ladies running around with their rollaway suitcases full of stuff. People often ask me, how can they keep from getting ripped off? How can they know that the person that they're buying from is not selling them something that's fake? Here's a vendor that has all the hallmarks of things that I look for when I'm looking for a trustworthy seller. This is the Silver Day Trading Company, and I have never met them before nor bought anything from them before. The first marker is do they have rough? The Silver Day Trading Company sells turquoise, and they had plenty of turquoise rough. They actually went one step further, and Amanda Klebanoff, one of the ladies that works there, was actually working some of the rough. It turns out that Amanda made some really beautiful sterling silver jewelry also. Next, ask questions when the vendor is not busy. As it turns out, the vendor, Dayton Simmons, was very knowledgeable tur about turquoise and he actually owned a mine. He explained the process of how he finished the turquoise. It turns out that he gave a lecture at GIA and they now use the video of that lecture as part of their turquoise curriculum. So the key is to ask questions. Don't ask while the vendor's busy trying to make a sale. For many of the vendors, Tucson is their make it or break it show. But when they're not so busy, ask them questions. You'll quickly figure out whether or not the person knows what they're talking about. And also you can learn a lot. This is a split from some of the turquoise that's from his Cirillus, New Mexico mine. Silver Day Trading Company has all the hallmarks of a trustworthy vendor. I made this long and kind of detailed video because I really love going to Tucson. People from all over the world come together for these two weeks to tend to every aspect of minerals. 
craftspeople do gemstone beading. Jewelers and wholesalers find beautiful colored stones. And people from the metaphysical side of minerals find a whole lot of treasure. I made this video to try to convince you that you too need to come out to the Tucson Gem Mineral and Fossils Showcase. I hope this information here will help you have a smoother trip. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. I hope to one day see you in Tucson at the Gem Mineral and Fossil Showcase. If you'd like to see some beautiful mineral eye candy, check out Krieger's YouTube channel. I'll leave his details in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like. And if you're interested in quirky Tokyo videos or videos about fountain pens, please give me a subscribe. Yay!